Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Ernest Thomas, president of Onyx Fine Arts Collective, and your MC for our first virtual fundraiser event. Today's event should also be a fundraiser as we have an exciting program planned for you, which will hopefully provide enough information to gain your support in reaching our $75,000 goal. During the course of the evening, you will learn about our organization, see a channel 21 video about Onyx, see two arts demonstration, a live testimonial about Onyx, a slideshow of artwork by Onyx artists, and engage in a support and gratitude activity led by one of our distinguished community leaders. I'd like to now introduce you to our board members and our board advisors, Ashby Reed, our vice president, Annie P. Hudson McKnight, our secretary, Dr. Robert Radford, treasurer, Gia Fraser Abbott, Jay Taylor, Lola Peters, Maria McDaniel, Robert Horton, and Rosa Gimson. Our board advisors are Elizabeth McDaniel and Sharon Silvers Outlaw. Onyx Fine Arts Collective was established in Seattle as a nonprofit, all volunteer organization to celebrate and promote the visual artwork of artists of African descent from the Pacific Northwest. Through public art exhibitions, Onyx believes communication in our society is improved and our legacy established through visual art as art communicates from soul to soul, unfiltered by written and spoken words. You're probably aware that two of our most notable artists, James Washington Jr. and Jacob Lawrence, passed away the same year. So where were the other artists of African descent? I'm principally a mixed media artist, and I recall being at the Rainier Avenue Lowe's hardware store looking for scrap wood. You know, mixed media artists are those guys who can take anything and make something out of it. And the reason I shop at Lowe's for scrap wood is because most of the scraps are free. <laughs> so on my exit, the, the store cashier, an African-American man said, say brother, what are you gonna use those scraps for? I told him I was an artist and wasn't sure how I was gonna use the scraps. But I asked him, where would you go in Seattle to find art by artists of African descent? He thought about it and finally said, he didn't know where he'd go, but he knew he could find some in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, this exchange told me that we had a lot of work to do locally. So we went looking for the local artists and initially identified seven. And during our 16 year history, our list has grown to over 400 and counting. Beside being African-American, these artists also share one other commonality. Most have never shown their artwork publicly. However, when artwork is exhibited by these artists, it receives very favorable comments from public viewers and event planners. For example, Onyx was honored by the Tri-Cities African American Community Cultural and Educational Society as being worthy of their 2014 Commitment to Diversity Award, which was given to recognize our success in establishing an artistic presence for artists of African descent from the Pacific Northwest. Additional accomplishments are also worthy of mention. We showcase group exhibits throughout Seattle 
and the Pacific Northwest areas, including exhibits at the Seattle Northwest African American Museum, University of Washington Jacob Lawrence Gallery, Richland Washington Public Library, and the Edith Green and Wendell Wyatt Federal Building in Portland, Oregon. Of special note, however, is the 12th annual exhibit called Truth Be Told, which was installed in the historic Seattle King Street Station, turned out to be the largest exhibit of artwork by artists of African descent in the history of the Pacific Northwest. Because of this milestone, the exhibit was published in a book under the title Truth Be Told, which was accepted by the Seattle Public Library. And we opened a nonprofit retail gallery space called Gallery Onyx, downtown Seattle, over five, six years ago. Gallery Onyx is located at 600 Pine Street on the third floor of the Pacific Place Shopping Center. Please visit us anytime from 12 to 6, Thursdays through Sundays. Onyx Fine Arts Collective has indeed created a mean through which artists of African descent feel encouraged to create and share visual art with the public. We are committed to do our part to make the Pacific Northwest healthy and inclusively vibrant through the visual arts. And we need your support so that we can continue this work. With that introduction, we're now gonna see the Seattle Channel video about Onyx, followed by art demonstrations by artists Latoya Ralliford and Ashby Reed, a testimonial about what Onyx means to me by board member Gia Fraser Abbott, and a slideshow of artwork by Onyx artists. It's a mistake to look at artists of African descent as being only interested in painting images of themselves. As you look around this gallery, I'd say more than 50% uh, don't reflect, uh, say, a, a Black traditional image. We reflect the entire spectra of what, what our experiences are. Not always we paint what we think is beautiful. Sometimes we paint what we see that's painful. Sometimes we paint what we feel inside. This is the image that I see in my mind. I have to put it on canvas. Part of the Black experience, the way I see it, is that resilience, perseverance, you know, overcoming, you know, obstacles. Onyx is uh, naturally a Black stone that comes out of the earth, and we see it as um, being an element that's somewhat hardened, that has strength and purpose. We know inherently that there's bias a lot of the galleries would not look at artists of African descent, not because of the quality per se, but because you're not bringing with you a pedigree. There was a time when an African-American artist would go down to a gallery and they would want to hang their work. The first question that they were asked was, where have you hung before? They couldn't say that. They couldn't say anything. This is a springboard for maybe the artist who hasn't had an opportunity to show or doesn't have a said reputation in the community but can bring in work and if the committee finds it worthy you you, you have a place gallerists are in the business to make money that's understandable but at the same time from my perspective they ought to be in the business of of looking for that diamond I remember him asking, Can you show me anything? Well, just out of curiosity, I, I'm interested in seeing some of your other stuff. And I showed him my work and he gave me the look. How dare you have never brought this to me before? <laughs> he says, oh, you're the brother that, that had that one piece. He goes, and when we all looked at it, we were like, wow. Whoa, there is genius that's being untapped. 
So then when I showed him that, he was like, oh, okay, yeah, are you serious, man? You know how he talks, yeah, man. And he's like, you only been doing art for three years, stop lying to me. Man, I wonder what's in this brother's head. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, you, you, oh, why you my brother? Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> so. We'll say things like, oh man, I wonder what's wrong with this brother, but that's actually a good thing. That means that, you know, I was impressed, I was blown away. But yeah, he says, man, where you been hiding at, man? He said, where you been? You been locked in the basement somewhere? Look at this. Where have you been? <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> and because I felt so comfortable, I was able to say, no, I've been locked up for 15 years. I was incarcerated. I made a mistake. I broke the law. I paid my due to society. And during that process, um, you know, I've had ample time to basically experiment and, and, and you know, perfect my craft. If no one sees your art or no one hears your story, if no one sees or experiences whatever it is that you're good at and you contribute to the world, it doesn't mean it's meaningless but you're not able to affect the lives and you're not able to be a part of what makes us great as human beings. Our, our people still aren't received and accepted. They say, we love your koi fish, but we don't like your more Afrocentric work. <laughs> told me recently like why are all the characters black and say like, why should they not be I'm like what does it matter they asked me okay troy can you do something that's um ethnic i'm like well you know anything that comes out of me is ethnic and so he said oh, yeah i i really like to i really like to see some ethnographics i've heard two schools of thought there you know one of course is to feed yourself <laughs> you know <laughs> and then and the other is to stay true to your form. I'm a black woman here, you know, I, I do have a voice. I am creative, I am a professional. I do want to be taken seriously. I feel that the other work will one day find its audience. If you don't see the color of the skin and, and you walk into a space and you see artwork, uh, people are gonna be encouraged just because of the quality of the artwork. Art breaks barriers, definitely. It, takes the visuals, it says a thousand words. This is the only venue of its kind here in Seattle for a very progressive city. It's kind of, uh, that's a little disappointing that we don't have more, but they have been here for us. This is an open opportunity. Opportunity for the artists, it's an, it's an opportunity for people to come see what's going on in the quote unquote uh, black art community. It's, it's important for us to to, to do this art and do a gallery so that we can kind of show, you know, that we are at the table. Onyx should have a permanent location here because it's not just pretty for the eyes. It's a historical monumental thing for Seattle and it should be one of those protected businesses, um, like indefinitely. <laughs> to see artists of color succeeding, selling their work, getting into more and more venues every year. Um, it's inspiration for me. It's hard getting work up someplace, but once it's there, no one wants to take it down. These artists are gonna continue to do artwork. And as long as they're doing artwork, we wanna, we wanna be there to show the world what we're doing. So what I'd like to do now is introduce you to our board member. You've been introduced once, but now you're going to hear from her. She's going to tell you what Onyx means to her board member for two years, Ms. Gia Frazier Abbott. Hello, good evening. Welcome and thank you for choosing to spend this time with us. I am Gia Frazier Abbott, as Ernie so graciously introduced me, and I've been associated with Onyx for about three years, board member for two. How it came to be, I was hanging out with some friends and they asked if I had been to Onyx. And I said, yeah, I've gone through a couple of times. 
And he said, what do you think about it? I said, I think it's amazing. I've not seen anything like that in Seattle. And he said, do you go often? And I said, when I'm downtown, I'll, I'll pop in. He said, you should think about volunteering there. And I said, you know what? I should. I said, this is a perfect time for me to do that. So when I was asked to speak tonight, it was presented as uh, think about it, uh, consider it, but I didn't have to think about it. It was an automatic yes. Um, I am just so honored and delighted to be a part of this group. Pardon me while I put on my glasses. I was trying to be brave and not use them. So I did say yes, and it's been a, a wonderful. Arnit has been and remains um, a huge part of my journey. I've been accepted into this amazing circle of people at the most perfect time in my life. I had no idea how essential being associated with this gallery would become to me and for me. Being at Onyx is a spiritual experience, truly. I honestly believe that because upon entering, you have no idea the feeling you're gonna take with you when you leave. You can feel it when you walk through the door. I must admit, there are times when you can hear Onyx before you can see Onyx because there's so much joy and laughter in this space. Occasionally, we watch people um, ride down the escalators and they hear our laughter and they are drawn to enter. Ashby and I have joked with people when they come in because they have this almost shocked look on their face. So we walk up to them and tell them, you have that look. So they're naturally like, well, what look are you talking about? And we say jokingly, you've been counting black people in Seattle, haven't you? This of course completely cracks them up because they don't expect people in a sophisticated gallery to say something like that to them. They immediately become relaxed and they end up staying for an hour or two, just sitting around talking with us. That being said, we look for reflections of us when we travel. There have been numerous occasions where visitors have been so delighted to find us, they actually phone their families to tell them about Onyx while they're in the gallery. Through my association, I've reconnected with people that I've not seen in years, in addition to adding amazing new acquaintances to my life. I've enjoyed art throughout my life. My motto has been in the past, art, artists need art lovers. For me, art, it, well, painting to me is emotions on canvas. Art is essential to the soul. This work, this place at this time is so very important and so needed. As I continue to think about what Onyx means to me, the sense of community is enormous in that there is an innate sense of family. Within Black American culture, when we meet someone, we are often almost immediately reminded of someone we know, we love, a family member, a dear friend, a former teacher, someone from our personal community. Within that connection, we begin to relate to that person. Since my initial involvement at Onyx, I've experienced that sense of family many, many times. I believe Black American culture is built on a sense of family and connection. It was imperative to our survival in the past and it remains extremely important now. It is our collective experience in this land that connects us. As our ancestors were from various tribes, our American experience, in my view, makes us one tribe. When we see the look on the eyes of visitors, it's at that moment of sheer wonderment that we love and we hold on to. I remember about a year ago, a beautiful family came into the gallery on a Sunday, which is normally the days that I'm here. I greeted them. I spoke about the origin of Onyx and the local artist. The parents walked one way, the teenagers went another way. There was a son and a daughter. I asked them to let me know if they had any questions or concern, and I stepped away to allow them the space to view the work. I noticed the youngsters fixated on one piece created by one of my favorite artists. 
The piece was of a black woman with big hair. Imagine that. They looked at the painting. They looked at me. Again and again, they kept going between the painting and me. Finally, one of them mustered up the courage to come to me and say, ma'am, is that you in that painting? Without hesitation, I said, yes, that is me. Without, and uh, although the model was not me, the likeness was clear, but what was also clear was the identity, the connection the children made with the painting to me and to themselves. So I would never forget their smiles. And I know I'm not supposed to lie to children. So I then said, she is every woman who looks like me and looks like you. I said, I'm sure you have an auntie or a neighbor or someone who looks that way. Their smiles grew. Those are the moments that fill my heart. Those are the connections I gain as a volunteer at this very, very special place. The smiles of the children to walk in here and see people in paintings that look like them is everything. The decision to name Onyx, Onyx Fine Art Collective is so warranted. It is not only a collection of art and artists, it's a collection of experiences. Onyx is a happy place, a special place, a needed place. I've found an extended family here with my involvement, my fellow board members and volunteers. Onyx is an experience. If you have not visited us, please do so soon. If you have, please come back and experience Onyx again and again. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Gia. So now let's look at some artwork by Onyx artist.
I'm always reminded of how important this work is after I see the artwork that our people are producing. It's amazing. Now it's my pleasure to introduce you to our next speaker. Vivian Phillips is a veteran communications professional known for her collaborative style and building partnerships and engaging communities. Her body of work spans radio and television broadcast, independent theater producing, teaching, art, and communications management, consulting, and community-based art planning. Vivian was director of communications for Seattle Mayor Paul Schell <clears throat> and interim director of the Langston Hughes Performing Arts Center. She served six years on the Seattle Arts Commission as chairperson for three years and played a leading role in obtaining increased funding for Seattle's Office of Arts and Culture to accomplish its equity goals. And her list of accomplishments go on and on. I can say that Vivian is one of our community's most respected and valued civic advocates. And we're thrilled that she agreed to work with us on this fundraiser. Everyone, please welcome Ms. Vivian Phillips. Thank you so much, Ernie. And I echo Gia's sentiment when she says that it was a no brainer. When she was asked, automatically the answer was yes. And I think I was in the grocery store when you called me about this particular event. And I was like, let me put the cart aside and say yes. So I just thank you so much. I think about the ways in which um, Onyx resonates in my heart and in my life. And I have been so nourished by your presence. And I just wanna say that at the very beginning, it's because of Onyx Fine Arts Collective that I can go almost anywhere and say, ah, that's an Ashby Reed. Oh, I know that's Al Doggett. That's an Ernest Thomas. That's a Myron Curry. That's a Vincent Keel. I know Carletta, do you know? It's that kind of nourishment that I have gotten from you all. And I just thank you so very much. And additionally, I want to say that when I consider the significance of Black art, I think about the griot culture in Africans, accompanied by the visual art narratives that keep our history intact and feeds our culture across oceans. I also consider the oldest known instance of human art that dates back approximately 73 thousand years discovered at Blombas Cave in South Africa, known as the San Rock Art. The art records things that happened in their lives, just as our art does today. And some of it depicts dancing, medicinal rituals, animals, and also progresses forward to even depict wagons that signal the arrival of colonizers. In this art, what we find are the stories and culture documenting early life on this planet. Artists are keepers of our culture, without a doubt. They are documentarians, the griots, and the visionaries that help us relate a sense of who we were, who we are, and what we can become. Black art originates this style of storytelling, emotional connection, and vision. And without Black art, our narratives are absolutely incomplete. Our humanity is anemic. In 1950, when Zoe Dassan opened Seattle's first gallery of modern art, she was a Black woman on a mission to introduce our city to the same kind of art experiences those on the East Coast consistently had available to them. And while the artists she showcased and represented were not Black for the most part, she seeded works for the Seattle Art Museum and the Henry Art Gallery. A Black woman did this for our city in the 1950s. And the city and state responded by claiming imminent domain over her home and her gallery, which overlooked Lake Union, and it was demolished to make way for I-5. I wanna note as well that in 1913, Zoe's mother, Letitia Graves, founded the Seattle chapter of the NAACP and served as its first president. 
Now, while Zell was able to reopen her gallery in downtown Seattle, the business unfortunately did not succeed. It is the legacy of Zoe de San and the San rock artists that is the foundation for Gallery Onyx and Onyx Fine Arts Collective. It is the drive and determination to not have the legacy, beauty, and inspiration that resides within the art displayed at Onyx and runs through the DNA of all the artists and volunteers that maintain this space, not have that be erased. They are the keepers of our culture. The legacy of black art is resident within the historical narratives of our times. In my particular instance, my Garfield High School art teacher, Dion Henderson was a black panther. And I will never forget his face, his creativity, his passion, his Afro, and definitely his flat jacket. Dion doesn't show up in a Google search or on the pages of blackpast.org or history link even. But thankfully, his art is forever protected as the painter of the Black Panther wall on 20th and Spruce. Had Onyx been around in the 1960s, the legacy of artists like Dion would be remembered and well-documented, of that I'm sure. Onyx fins off erasure for current and future artists like Dion. In the space between the 1950s, 1960s, and today, the preservation and representation of Black art has had numerous fits and starts. And we give appreciation, I do personally, to the Joseph Zimbabwe's, the Doreen Mitchums, Al Doggett's, Eric Salisbury's, Carol Roshana Williams, Tarika Waters, and others, all of whom have had or have a dedication to creating spaces where Black art can be appreciated. Yet Onyx Fine Arts Collective has sustained over the course of more than 16 years and grown from a small group of artists to now being connected to an ever-growing list of over 400 Black artists who continue to gain prominence locally, nationally, and internationally. It's become a, a, a part of popular culture lately in, in the vernacular to talk about holding space. Everybody is talking about holding space. And in my view, much of this is light talk. And it's equated with often single events or being the only Black person in a workplace or posting on social media, that kind of thing. That's what's being called holding space. But what does it truly mean to hold space? How many people understand the countless hours of unpaid volunteer service that goes into creating a 16 plus year legacy? What sacrifices of family, free time, simple life enjoyment have been made to create this concept much before the phraseology became mainstream and popular? But Onyx has faced the threat of obscurity over and over, and they are defeating, they are defeating, and they take very seriously this art called holding space. As Ernie mentioned during my tenure on the Seattle Arts Commission from 2011 to 2017, among the things we were determined to accomplish at that time was securing King Street Station for the arts community having firmly dedicated ourselves at that time to illustrating what equity and inclusion could really look like, hosting Truth Be Told at the gallery space was an absolute no-brainer for anyone who thought about it. It was a show of authority on our part as a commission and on the part of the Office of Arts and Culture and a magnificent showcase on the part of Onyx lifting these black talents out of the shadows and placing them squarely in an historically iconic location in the center of our city. And I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the work of Elizabeth Johnson in making that particular show happen. And look at what Elizabeth continues to serve up for us in the manifestation of Wanawari. That is another example of how legacy and vision continue to beautifully collide and hold space. So this concept of holding space, let me, let me assure you that it comes with a cost. Those who never have to say that 
is what they are doing are the ones making the true investments in the sustainability and care of our culture. In an interview for the Truth Be Told exhibit, Ernie uh, spoke about looking forward to a day when an all black exhibition isn't necessary. I agree with you, you're absolutely right, Ernie, and I advise you not to wait on that day. And even though we're now experiencing a time when change in attitudes and giving structures are evolving, we must acknowledge that changing is not yet change, but we are hopeful for the day that a press release announces the inclusion of Onyx Fine Arts in a round of giving from Mackenzie Scott. I'm waiting for that day. But there is a meantime. And in that meantime, I'm starting to think about how are those institutions whose names were on that list, how are they lifting up other arts organizations, other organizations in general? How are they lifting up Onyx? Well, we're not gonna wait and hold our breaths to find out that either. But let me share a personal intention that I have for Onyx Fine Arts. I have to say that um, being here today is an honor because it allows me to at least make a deposit and paying back all that I've gotten from Onyx. I have called on this gallery on a couple of occasions at least to help me and I've received help without hesitation. One of those instances was in the development of the art plan and the selection of artists for that beautiful building that is going up with that incredible art on the exterior at 23rd and Union. The art is uh, by Barry Johnson and Adam Jabari Jefferson, and we'll also get a chance to see art on the exterior from Onyx's very own Myron Curry. So I, I really want to say thank you for helping to make that happen, helping to select those artists. And as a result of that fine work, I've been offered an opportunity and have recently been able to strike a deal with the developers of the Midtown Project on 23rd for a 3,400 square foot space. This space will be dedicated to Black art and culture. And 1,500 square feet of that space, I am personally dedicating to Onyx Fine Arts, to have a permanent home in Seattle's central area. I think earlier there was mention of the fact that Onyx needs to be preserved. I want to help make that happen. So I'm barking upon a funding campaign with the intention of raising enough money. And I'm, I've learned over my lifetime, you got to put your intentions out into the universe, right, in order for them to come true. So my intention is to raise enough money to underwrite the entire residency for Onyx Fine Arts. And while the deals have been drafted and they'll soon be inked, there is a meantime. And in the meantime, Onyx is worthy of all of our support. I've made this commitment to honor this institution and appreciation for the culture you all keep from me. And I invite you all who are here today to honor as well. Please give. There is always going to be a number of needs. Bills have to get paid. Hurdles have to be overcome. These are all of the things that happen in the meantime. So I'm asking you to be the bridge today. Be the ones who stand in the gap in, in memory of the Zotasan. Be the meantime that honors the efforts and dedication of a small group of Onyx founders whose vision is one that we are experiencing right now. Be the meantime that underpins the voluntarism of the board of directors and the Ernest Thomases and the Ashby Reeds and the countless other volunteers. Be more than a voyeur and even a griot that talks about what was. Be the meantime that guides Onyx through the right now time. Also, Ernest mentioned earlier that the Truth Be Told result exhibit resulted in the publication of a book by the same name. And I'm happy to say this evening that Truth Be Told 2 will soon be released. And anyone who makes a contribution of $1,000 or more 
you will receive a signed copy of this new publication as a thank you. I want to say, you get a copy, and you get a copy, and you get a copy. But that means that all of you have to give. So make your gift right now and then invite at least one other person that you haven't invited before to join you in making that gift. I want you all to think about what it means to be in the meantime. Thank you. Oh, ain't she great. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Vivian. And I wanna thank everyone for attending our virtual fundraiser. I'm hopeful what you've seen and heard tonight is enough to gain your financial support, which we need to keep moving forward and growing. Our objective is to make Seattle and the Pacific Northwest a more inclusive and vibrant place for everyone. I especially want to thank the Onyx Fundraiser Committee, Rosa Gemson, who led the committee, Sharon Sober's Outlaw, and Dr. Robert Rafford for planning and putting this event together. I'd be remiss if I didn't give a special shout out to Eddie Marino, whose technical consultation was invaluable. Well, I guess we got to end somewhere. And this is it. This is the end of our evening. I have enjoyed being with you and I hope you enjoyed the evening as well. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you in the near future. Take care everyone and be safe.